hello and welcome or welcome back to my channel i feel like it's been forever since i've sat down and done a reading video my background probably doesn't look super different but also maybe it does it's a different angle but the shelves are still the same i did move though um i have a whole reading vlog not reading vlog moving vlog that is probably up before this actually I'm planning on getting that up ASAP so if you have not seen that it might be split into two parts at least part of it is up right now go watch that because I literally packed all of these up unpacked them like packing books is one of the worst things ever because you have to put them in small boxes otherwise they get way too heavy and you cannot lift them so I had like so many boxes of books but we made it, everyone made it here safely. And now it's time for a little mid-year recap, a little book tag, if you will. I saw Larry do this video and I know she got the questions from Sarah. I'll put the questions down below, but I did not come up with them. I'm just gonna talk through some of my favorites and things I'm looking forward to for the second half of the year. So to start off with a bang, I'm going to go with my favorite books of the year so far. And a lot of the books I'm going to talk about for other portions of this video would fall under this category too, but I tried to space it out so I wasn't talking about the same books over and over again. So I do have three here that I think are like favorites for the year that I think about. And the first one truly I think might be a top favorite like cream of the crop is The Women by Kristen Hanna. This was my first Kristen Hanna book and it was so good. Sorry, my computer just made a noise. Okay, it's fine. It was so good. I listened to, I wanna say probably like 80% of it, read 20% of it, but I, loved this it was for book club and honestly I don't know that I would have picked it if not for book club but I am obsessed it was so well written so clearly well researched I sobbed and one of the other questions was a book that made you cry and obviously this would fall into that category this made me cry the most of any book that I've read this year thus far but I felt like it deserved this category more than the crying one if that says anything but this is so good. If you have not read it, you definitely should. But also any of Kristen Hanna's books. I haven't read her other stuff, but I've only heard good things and I want to read some of her other stuff. But for now, I'm going to recommend this. It's so good. Sorry, Kate's being a little bit obnoxious. Next, and this is controversial because some people did not like this book but I really liked it. That is Bride by Allie Hazelwood. This is a special edition cover. It's literally just the original hardback, but with a special cover, which is a little annoying, but also I like this cover a lot. Um, you get to see Lo and Misery and Lo's Wolf is back here. Um, you get to see him with his buzz cut, which I love, but I've read this book twice this year and I am a rereader like I do reread books but for me to reread a book twice in a year is definitely shows how much I loved it and that is this book for me it it was so good it's shifter it's a shifter romance he is a shifter a wolf shifter and she is a vampire and then it's an arranged marriage, faded mates, knots. It is so good. It's not for everyone, but this was one of my favorites this year for sure. Next I have Just for the Summer by Abby Jimenez. This is like top tier Abby Jimenez for me. It's so close to yours truly as like battling for my favorite of Abby's books. Um, Abby Jimenez writes so well about like real topics and meshes them with romance in like a such a good way. It's like always sweet and funny and great. And also I cry <laughs> every time. And Justin 
is like top tier book boyfriend after this. Um, like so perfect. I love him. I love this like book, these characters. It's amazing. And the cover, like it's beautiful. Okay, those are my favorites. Kate knocked my phone over, so let's pull up the next one, which is best sequel you've read. So, I'm gonna talk about both of this duology because the sequel is Our Violent Delights and the first one is, nope, the first one is These Violent Delights, the second one is Our Violent Ends. And Our Violent Ends is such a great sequel, but I feel like I haven't done justice talking about both this duology in general. Maybe I have, but I have the nice box set and I didn't wanna take the second one out of the box set. So I'm just holding both up here. But the sequel to this one truly is so good. It was five stars for me. This duology is a five star series. And I also read the second duology that's connected to this series. It follows different characters, but that one is also a five star duology for me. I think Chloe Gong wrote such a good story in these. It's a Romeo and Juliet retelling. It's historical fiction. It's a little bit of fantasy, but it's like fantasy light. And honestly, it's YA, but it doesn't feel YA to me. I feel like I'm getting to the point where sometimes YA is too simple, but this didn't feel that way for me. It's YA in the sense that the romance is PG, but it's not YA in the sense that the themes and the writing and, and the storytelling is not simple. So highly recommend Chloe Gong and this series. Next, I'm putting the rule book here, not because this was, this was not a five star book for me, this was four stars for me, but I do think I enjoyed the rule book more than the cheat sheet, which a lot of people loved the cheat sheet, and this is like the second in that series. So, if that says anything, I liked this one more. It was four stars for me, it's a football romance. Um, it's like marriage of convenience. There's so many tropes in here. Um, one bed but also fake marriage i don't know it's kind of crazy there's a lot happening it was a sequel and i enjoyed it and it was hard for me to find sequels i have read several sequels but it was like i don't know that category this category was hard for me so we went with that okay new release i haven't read yet but want to that's going to be the rom commers by katherine center I have it on my list. It was a book of the month add-on and I really want to add it on for next month because the other Catherine Center books that I have are actually right here and they are book of the month and I want the rom commerce to match. So I'm waiting to add on the rom commerce to next month's book of the month so that I can get it and have it match my other Catherine Center books because I don't always have my books match, but when I do, I'm picky about it. <laughs> Most anticipated release for the second half of the year. <sighs> I'm gonna go with Reckless by Lauren Roberts. That might be out by the time this video was up. Actually, it comes out like next week, but I'm super excited for that one. Um, I'm really excited for The Lost Story by Meg Schaefer or Schaffer, I don't know how you pronounce her last name. She wrote The Wishing Game, which was like one of my favorites from last year. So I'm very excited for that from her. Also Daydream, the third icebreaker book is coming out. I'm excited about that. I love a hockey romance. Um, nothing like the movies, the sequel to Better Than The Movies, which is probably my favorite book of all time comes out in October and I am so excited about it. Cannot wait. So that's probably my most anticipated for the second half of the year. Okay, biggest surprise, I'm gonna go with Ready or Not by Cara Bastone. This again was a book of the month and I always seem to be underestimating book of the month. I kind of picked it mostly because like the cover is stunning. It is Accidental Pregnancy, which I 
generally really enjoy accidental pregnancy. I know some people don't, but I usually like those, but I, I didn't have high like expectations. I was like, it's a romance, like, and I had never heard of this author, but leave it to book of the month to always pick like a good book. You know, they're not, they're not picking bad books. So I should have known this was going to be so good. I read this in February and it was immediately five stars and it's fr childhood friends to lovers, which is such a sweet trope. And honestly, one of my favorites, I just, I love that development and I think it feels so natural and beautiful. So I highly recommend. Okay. Next is newest fictional crush. And honestly, I don't, <laughs> I don't have this physical copy of this book. It's Emma of 83rd, which is a Emma retelling, a Jane Austen retelling. And so it's obviously George Knightley. And I don't know if this counts as newest fictional crush because he's been around forever. And that book is a retelling of Jane Austen's amazing characters, but Jane Austen knows how to write a man. I also read Emma this year um, and I've been like really in my like retelling and honestly classics era, really Jane Austen uh, era and her men are so good. I also read Anne of Green Gables. I love Gilbert Blythe. Like I've just been into those like something about them. Men today will never compare. George Knightley, if I loved you less, I might be able to talk about it more, is so good. Such a good love confession. Like Bridgerton who, it's George Knightley confessing his love to Emma. I'm obsessed with him and I love him. And I thought Emma of 83rd did such a good job of like modernizing it. So props. And there's a second one coming out that's a Pride and Prejudice retelling. So I can't wait for that. It's coming out possibly in a few months. So I will be reading it, not to worry. Next is books that made you cry. And I am gonna start with House of Flame and Shadow. Now this was, I did annotate this, if you can see, maybe not. This was a controversial one because while I loved the first two Crescent City books, this wasn't my favorite, it's also huge so huge and hardback and like <laughs> it's a lot but i think no matter what your thoughts are the ending was intense and i did cry um i have a whole full spoilers reading vlog so if you want like all of the details all of my reactions watch that video because it's so hard to talk about books that are like later in a series without completely spoiling everything. So just know I did cry while reading this. And next we have This Summer Will Be Different by Carly Fortune. This is her third book and I really enjoyed her first two. This one was, I think my favorite of hers, mostly because it's, there's a strong plot line of female friendships and there's a long distance friendship and I just love female friendships. I think that's why I love Happy Place, like talking about friendships and sisterhood is so special and I think when it's included in a romance as something that's just as beautiful as romantic love is stunning. And Carly did such a good job writing their friendship. And that's, I read this right as my sister was moving out. And so it was an emotional time of like me having my friend, my best friend move and something similar happened in this book. So I highly recommend, this is my favorite of hers and it did make me cry. Okay, next I've got favorite new author or new to me author. And so I've got with me Claire Gilmore. I read this at the beginning of this year, possibly last year. I think it was the beginning of this year, a few months ago. 
and it's a workplace romance. I really enjoyed it. I gave it four, maybe five stars, and I got the arc of Perfect Fit, which is Claire's second novel. So this was her debut novel. This is her second one that comes out. When does it come out? It should say on here. October of 2024. And I gave this one four, five stars. I just really enjoyed her writing and like there's some spice but it's really not a lot this one especially is set in Austin and Nashville and I'm like from the Austin area and I live in Nashville now so it was like perfect this is like a Bon Appetit type type setting if you watched Bon Appetit videos with like Claire Saffitz and all that I know I did I'm obsessed it's like Condé Nast if you haven't read her book, this one, you definitely should before her second one comes out so you can be like with the times because I know she's gonna be so big. I'm so excited for her. These are amazing. And last but not least, we have the most beautiful book that I have read category. And that is gonna go to these Penguin in Bloom editions of some of my favorite books. I, as I said, I read Emma this year, so I got the Penguin in Bloom edition, which is literally so coquette and so pretty. Like, in the back it says, it is such happiness when good people get together. So pretty. So, because I got that, I was like, I also need to get the Pride and Prejudice version because I read Pride and Prejudice. I've read Pride and Prejudice multiple times, but I was like, well, I need to get a matching copy. So of course I got the Penguin in Blue copy and on the back it says, you must allow me to tell you how ardently I love and admire you. Admire and love you, sorry. And then I also read this year, Anne of Green Gables. So of course, after I read Anne of Green Gables, I was like, must get the Penguin and Bloom copy. And here is Anne of Green Gables. And on the back it says, looking forward to things is half the pleasure of them. And, oh, that's one thing I forgot to mention about this summer will be different. It's set on Prince Edward Island, which is, if you don't know where Anne of Green Gables is set. So there's a lot of like Anne of Green Gables references, which I love, especially because I had just read this when I read that one. And then, I was like, Ugh, if I'm collecting these, I need to get Sense and Sensibility, which I read last year. So this is the Sense and Sensibility cover. And on the back it says, to wish was to hope and to hope was to expect. These are just stunning and they are on display in my living room because everyone has to see them. But that is my mid-year reading wrap up. I hope you enjoyed this video and gave you some ideas for what to read, some of the stuff I'm looking forward to. I'll do a little reading challenge update. So if you watch my end of the year book tag, you will know that I my reading goal was 125 books. I am happy to let you know that I have surpassed and I've read 138 books this year so far. So we are on the way to 200. That's like the new self-made mental goal that I've made. I'm still gonna be happy that I got 125 because I don't wanna set 200 and then not meet it. I have been in a touch of a book slump recently. I just like haven't been motivated to read, which is fine because I've already read a ton this year, but that's kind of my reading update. Another one of my goals was to read more classics and as you can tell, I have read Emma and Anne of Green Gables this year. So I've been reading my classics and I've also been reading some different genres. I've been reading some thriller, other stuff, mystery. So I've been branching out a little. Did I mostly talk about romance today? Yes, I did. That's okay though. So I will see you guys somewhere else on the internet. Bye.